this constitution is for the citizens of this country to participate in the election. The corporate sector is not a voter. The citizen is the voter. The citizen should be entitled, is entitled to contribute. If he gives more than 20,000 rupees, his name will be there. But the corporate sector, who is not a citizen, can donate 10 crores, 100 crores, his name will not be there. What's the rationale for that? I, as a citizen's name, I'll have to be, it'll have to be disclosed. So, is the corporate sector is being granted a privilege over a citizen of this country? That privilege of anonymity? How is he more privileged than a citizen who is at the heart of the constitution of India? How is he being given a preferential treatment? Why? Because you want to enrich yourself through this scheme. And because the person who donates will go and tell him orally that I gave you such and such money. This is the amount I gave you, 100 crores. Only he will know that he gave. The anonymity would exist only if it was truly fungible. That's right. I make a donation of 10 crores to a political party through an electoral bond. The political party opens a current account and 10 crores goes into that account. Now that political party can actually give that money to uh, 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 the mainstream media channel and say you propagate my ideology or give a present to somebody as it is in politics. The more capital you have, the more power you have. That's number one. So, Point number two, the electoral process must be such that it must provide a level playing field to all participants. Fair and free elections or free and fair elections is the basic structure of the constitution. Yes. Concept number three, the moment you allow the corporate sector to donate, whether with transparency or without transparency, I'll come to that a little later. It is inconsistent with the concept of a corporate sector which is in the business of doing business. You have a memorandum of association which tells you what the objects of the corporation are. The shareholders put in their money to ensure that the corporation functions within the framework of the, of the memorandum of association. Now you give the power through an amendment of this nature to allow shareholders' money to be used inconsistent with the memorandum of the association. It's a very serious issue. And without consultation and without the consent of the shareholder, under which law, well, then I ask myself this question, can this ever be allowed? I, bought, I buy shares in a company. It may be listed, it may not be listed. One, well, just one caveat, Mr. Sibyl, which is that we are not here on the challenge to the legality of a law providing for corporate donations per se. Yes. That wider issue is not before. No, us. I agree. But I'm, For I'm the not, reason yeah. that that's what Justice Chagla flagged, even in Chief Justice Chagla flagged, even in 1955-58. He said there should be no corporate donation, but we are not really dealing with that. So I'm not on that. I'm not really into that area at all because 293 anyway allowed. Well, I'm not. I'm not on that. So I'm on a wider on. On what you said in the latter part of your formulation, without the consultation. And the yeah, uh, approval of the, the shareholders. That's, that's the, the point. point. Yes. That's the point. That's why I said, Balad. Otherwise, that's you know, the broader philosophical perspective that look, allowing corporate donations is really permitting some form of quid pro quo. Right? No, 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 Malad, I'm not on and that because my learned friend has argued that. We need that broad area here because, in that sense, the moment we accepted 293, our society legitimized. No, no, no. Corporate quid pro quo. Uh, quid pro quo. <laughs> Malad, I. I uh, well, let's, let's, uh, but you know, there is an element of quid pro quo the moment you have corporate Exactly, business. exactly. But there's no but doubt therefore, about it. I mean, that's why a large public limited company who makes a donation doesn't give it for charity. Exactly, exactly. Or for, you know, for, for that's why I said capital and influence are, are Siamese twins. So we shouldn't really in that. I'm not going there, Malad. I'm not. I'm, I, that's why I said that what you're doing in this process is that you're allowing through the electoral bond process to not inform the shareholder as to how his money is going to be spent, right? And that's a very serious issue because he is invested in the company, not for the purposes of donating to X and Y. That's the third concept. The fourth is even more important. This is nothing to do with electoral bonds, if you ask me. It is donation to a political party to use the funds as they like. The nomenclature suggests electoral bonds means this is for the purposes of the election. There is nothing in the scheme. There is nothing in the scheme which connects the donation made to the path to the 
uh, to the participation in the electoral process. Nothing. It is a means for political parties to be enriched. Why do I say that? I make a donation of 10 crores to a political party through an electoral bond. The political party opens a current account and 10 crores goes into that account. Now that political party can actually give that money to uh, 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 the mainstream media channel and say, you propagate my ideology or give a present to somebody or do what, what you want to do with it. There are no spending requirements. None, none, zero. That's the most serious issue because <laughs> you can spend this money any way you like. You can build your offices. You can build your offices all, all over the country with that money. You can set up a whole internet set network throughout the country with that money. You can use advertising campaign for whatever you like with that money. Show your face 20 times a day and see the nexus. The corporate sector gives money to the political party. The political party and the corporate sector owns a media house. And just look at the nexus. The corporate part, donor owns the media house. The corporate donor gives it to the political party. The political party uses the media house. No questions asked. Institutional argument. Going but on some no, 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 instances. I, I, not, I'm not talking of any instance. I'm talking, talking about the scheme. Please do not interfere. I'm talking about the scheme. I'm not talking about any instance. That's the law. No, Bharat Shah. Article 14 argument. Yes. Yes, Bharat. The scheme is wholly arbitrary. It has to be struck down on its terms. It has nothing to do only with elections and how you spend your money in the electoral process. What are you hinting at, this, uh, I'm sorry? What are you hinting at? at Malaj, they, they, what, you you close you? the account, that's the end of the matter, Malaj. So no. You get the money, close the account, but... That's it, and then you spend it the way you want. Well, this is not this is not a scheme for for well. I can understand. Well, I quite frankly I can understand the corporate sector being told that you we impose a cess like education cess. You impose a cess on the corporate functioning of companies. With that cess, you have a you have a capital, and capital you distribute in accordance with the representation in the Lok Sabha. So everybody has the same amount, and the same money can be used for that. What you are doing now is entirely different. You are saying you give me as much money as you want to give me. That has he's argued, Muller, that... Your submission is this is not money for electoral participation, but money for... Enriching the, the party. Political party. Yes. The individual party. He's just enriching the party. There are no spending requirements. No, 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 requirement no, 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 no accountability. Nothing. No accountability. Absolutely no accountability. What's the next point? The last you? point, but the yes. fifth point, is that in fact, it protects, the, 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 the nature of the scheme protects those who have committed a crime. I'll give you an example. Under the Prevention of Corruption Act, Mullers, Section 7 of the Prevention of Corruption Act, you give money to a public servant, members of parliament are public servants, many members of the political party who are in the fray are public servants. Now, in, as your lordship knows, under Section 7, you can also prosecute a person in anticipation of a favor not just having granted a favor. So you give a donation, no questions asked, you get a favor, you don't, cannot correlate one with the other, and I can't prosecute you. This is a scheme to protect criminals from being prosecuted. Just read section 7 with me. This is also true under the PMLA, because a predicate offense has been committed, it results in proceeds of crime, you'll never get to know. Rather than furthering the rule of law, it stymies it. That's the other Article 14 argument. You never know who bribed whom, how much was the bribe for, what quid pro was there. You never get to know. That there is quid pro quo, Mullers, is in my first submission. That capital and influence go together. Mullers, no, nobody can doubt that proposition, Mullers. So in effect, in, in effect, through this scheme, you are trying to protect those people. Where the source of the money is, my learning friend has argued, I don't want to, Mullers, repeat anything that, that he has said. And Mullers, see what the, what, what what is the scheme? If it's less than 2,000 rupees, it's cash. If it's more than 20,000 rupees, the name of the donor has to be given. And if it is electoral bonds, nothing. That's the three layers of the scheme. So while the donor's name will be given, if it's more than 20,000 rupees, right? And so ordinary, well, ultimately, well, let's put it this way. This constitution is for the citizens of this country to participate in the election. The corporate sector is not a voter. 
the citizen is the voter. The citizen should be entitled, is entitled to contribute. If he gives more than 20,000 rupees, his name will be there. But the corporate sector, who is not a citizen, can donate 10 crores, 100 crores, his name will not be there. What's the rationale for that? I, as a citizen's name, I'll have to be, it'll have to be disclosed. So, is the corporate sector is being granted a privilege over a citizen of this country? That privilege of anonymity? How is he more privileged than a citizen who is at the heart of the constitution of India? How is he being given a preferential treatment? Why? Because you want to enrich yourself through this scheme. And enrich yourself because you're in power. Whereas the opposition may be in power in a state. They will also enrich themselves. I'm not, this is not political. Because all business will actually be attracted towards this scheme because this is one way of getting access. I just pardon me, Malas, for saying so from personal experience. If people donate, Malas, we know who is donated. He will give me a call and say, Sir, I want to come over. I will hear him. But if I don't know his name who is donated, Malas, I won't listen. I mean, I, how many calls will I answer? So you get access. Straight away you get access. And this, all this anonymity that we're talking about is really not anonymous. Because the person who donates will go and tell him orally that I gave you such and such money. This is the amount I gave you, 100 crores. Only he will know that he gave. The anonymity would exist only if it was truly fungible. That's right. In which case, if it's truly fungible, like a DMAT account, in which That's case, right. you give it to, say, the election Then it's committee, anonymity. And then it, is, uh, right. then it becomes anonymous. That's right. Now it is not. In fact, it is not anonymous if you ask me. That's my summation. Because I have given a hundred crores, I know that I bought a bond. My learned friend, Mr. Shanti Bhushan, uh, Mr. Shant Bhushan said, no, no, uh, he'd give it to a third person, doesn't matter. But who is interested in, in that bond? The person who I, who I bought the bond. So I will go and tell whoever I want to tell that I gave you. So he doesn't have to go to the State Bank of India. Let's talk practical politics. He doesn't have to go to the State Bank of India to find out. Nor does the State Bank of India have to disclose it. The person who gave it will disclose it because he knows why he gave it. So what is anonymous about this? This is protecting the rich. 